Welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James' greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. This is part one of a three-part series, because obviously LeBron James being one of the greatest players in NBA history has countless stories, and this video would be about two hours long had I not broken it up into three parts. So if you haven't seen any of the other episodes within the full series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right of your screen. If you click on that, you'll find all the episodes within the series. Because this is such a long episode, even broken up into three parts, it has taken me a long time to create and I would really appreciate if you guys could quickly hit that like button before the video begins. If you're new and you like videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button so you are notified when a new episode drops. Lastly, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a wonderful 2022. Without further ado, here's the complete collection of LeBron James's Greatest Stories, Part 1. We play in different eras. He's, he's an unbelievable player. Yeah, he's one of the best players in the world, uh, if not the best player in the world. When you start the comparisons, I think it is what it is. You know, It's just a stand-up measurement. You know, and I, I take it with a grain of salt. He is a heck of a basketball player, without a doubt. It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him, and I ain't going to give you no line. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to give you everything else. That's what I tell bro. I'm like, he gave you everything. And I remember, I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was um, it was a play we was trying to run and one of our teammates forgot the play and Bron told him the play. He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's gonna win it. All right, now, what makes it, what makes it worse, what makes it worse is this. Bron says, I'm gonna get to this spot and shoot. But if I get here, and any one of them is flinching off of their man, I'm beaming it to that man. Right here. And we've been spoiled. Yeah. He's, it's just been it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do. I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. It's simple. For years, I always caught so much flack of you know, us being the, the better team or whatever we was at, at one point in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals and people not realizing, like, it's, it's, it's tough to get past this motherfucker. I don't care who you are, you know what I mean? And see him come to the West and be able to do the same thing, it's, it's, it's a testament to his greatness and, you know, his IQ to the game when he, when he go out there and play. You know, um, I remember, um, like you said, 16 when we went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, we won game three and four, and it was like a whole nother mindset click for him. And the player to coach against, and one most difficult and going through him with the, in the playoffs was LeBron James. This guy was looking in your mouth like right there and just calling it, it was telling the players exactly what was gonna happen on the play that you call. And I remember, I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was, um, it was a play we was trying to run, and one of our teammates forgot the play, and Bron told him the play. But I was also in the gym when I watched him on the floor against Toronto tell Patrick Patterson where he was supposed to go on the play they had called out of timeout late in the fourth quarter. He's like, no, Pat, you're supposed to stand over there, and you're going to pin down for DeMar over here. <laughs> wow. That's, that's hilarious. That's who he is. <laughs> like it was some crazy shit it was some like it was some crazy stuff we called it a play and he was like what and Brian told him what our play was you know and it just shows you like how locked in this dude be when it comes to that come the winning time man and, and you see it when he out there on both ends man but that change and you, you know this like we, we beat him a couple times when he was in Cleveland he was not that way I, I've never seen a change in a player. Uh, I knew we were in trouble in Miami uh, when we were coaching. When he was in Cleveland, he was just playing right, basketball. Right, right. We get to Miami, and he's in Miami now, and he's calling our plays out. He's staring over at our bench. Yeah. Uh, he's he's uh, he's reading stuff, and yeah. I remember saying, "Oh, oh this is not uh, this is not, <laughs> not good." good. Uh, you know, there there are a lot in 
Dwayne brings it up. There's when you're drawing a play in a timeout, you know as an opposing coach that that one guy can can screw things up for you. I know you know the famous, you know, free throw, LeBron, mm -hmm. you know the. So yeah. so, what did he say to you? And then, how did you like? How were you able to like maintain your focus? Well, you missed him. We respectful there, but like missed him. But like, how did you lose sight like for what you're trying to do? Like make the free throw and then. Uh, okay, so we have to back up a little bit All right. because um, I was balling. Looking to inbound, Arenas puts up the three. <laughs> I was I was balling that fourth quarter, and we it, miracle comeback. You know, um, down three. Um, I hit the uh, hit almost like a thirty footer to, to take us to overtime. Um, kind of got a little tired, and you know, in overtime, but got to the free throw line. You know, it's butter. Game's mm. over. We up one. I'm about to hit these three. This is easy. And LeBron comes by and taps you on the chest and whispers something to you. What did, what did he tell you? He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's going to win it. Mm. You know, and when he tapped me and he's like, you know, if you miss these, you know, that's game. And for that one second, I became human and thought about it. All right, now, what makes it, what makes it worse, what makes it worse is this. So because we gamble at LeBron's house, me, Damon Jones, you know, that was our group. Right. So Damon Jones was horrible. Horrible, he was hor horrible, horrible at cards. <laughs> so he owed me money. So I always used to say, like, every time we played them, I always used to scream out, <laughs> the landlord's here. The landlord needs his rent money. Right. So that's, I'll, like, every time we came to town, shoot around, I'm yelling it, the game, I'm yelling it. Like, that's all I yelled. So I told the coach, hey, anytime you put Damon Jones in, I'm going one for flat. He owes me money. Until he pays me my money, <laughs> one for flat. He's going to be a liability out on his court. And that's what I did every time he came in, one for flat. So they wasn't, so he stopped playing. So he doesn't even play in game six. So when he, when he whispers, you know who's going to hit it, Everybody assumed it was him. I knew what he was talking about. You know, and it, and it had me thinking about it. And, I'm, and I and I can even see it on my face when I watch, like, oh yeah, you're missing these, bro. Mm -hmm. And then I, I missed the first one, and I'm sitting there like, how the hell did I miss that? That's just so off. Mm -hmm. Missed the second one. And I'm sitting here like, yo, did this just really happen? Where did I go? I don't miss free throws. I don't miss clutch free throws. And I think the thought went into my head. Uh, they really gonna put Damon Jones in and let him hit a shot. And I just, <laughs> I just missed. Like it was, like I was, I was balling that game. Just hit the three to get us in overtime, playing great in overtime. Um, very great battle. And then I see Damon Jones in there stretching, and and they really put the man in. And the fact that LeBron even passed him the ball is what hurt the most. Damon Jones in the corner just came in the game for the first time in two games and hit the shot. Who 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 does that? <laughs> that, that, that that's what that's why I said I I had to, that's why I said I went to go like do mental stuff. Right. Like with the uh, uh with the uh, mental training because I, I was like ah, this didn't just happen. You didn't tell me this man was gonna come in and hit and then he comes in and then you pass him the ball like he's done. Hit five straight threes. I need to go see some hill because I don't want to be the, the next uh, Nick Anderson out here. LeBron is 36, turns 37, I believe, in December. Yeah, man. Um, how is he still, like, what makes him special? And even when you talk about mileage and how, you know, how he's doing it night in and night out, where you talk about usage rate, you talk about, you know, um, load management, he ain't doing what Kawhi's doing. He ain't doing what these other KD, and I love KD, I love Kyrie, but you know, KD just and took AD off. AD hurt, AD hurt, so LeBron gotta take on more with LA right now. Right, so like what makes him special? You know, you had that, yeah. This dude up there. 
He left the hospital with more than everybody. Bro, bro, listen. Bro, Brandon, hey, be Marsh. No. This dude out the, up there, out the, bro. Out the womb. Bro, his shopping cart of talent when he was born was bigger than everybody's, dog. They gave him everything. Dude behind LeBron, he don't have <laughs> nothing. Yeah, but, give, but you got to give me more, man, because <clears throat> we know what goes into it, the sports science, how we train, how we eat, how we sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What are we not seeing that you saw? Yeah, right? You guys have a chef for the show, right? We, we understand about putting in your body. We understand about the, the, the training that you need. As athletes, former athletes, we understand the training that you need. But ultimately, man, I've watched, I've watched this guy, and I, I see him take care of his body. I see him own it 100%. But I have also know that guys can roll their ankle and be out four weeks. I've seen this guy roll his ankle and come back and give you about 20 in the fourth quarter. I'm talking about a bad roll ankle, and I'm like, oh, he done. He come right back. I'm out four weeks with this roll ankle. He come right back fourth <laughs> right. quarter, scored 20. Right. It's the... It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him. And I ain't going to give you no lining. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to give you everything else. That's why I tell bro. I'm like, he gave you everything. He gave him everything. He just said, I'm going to just take this one but thing. But when is he going to let it go, though? <laughs> no, he, listen, as long as he got money, he ain't letting he, it go. He's too rich to let it go. Do, do you think he carry in his pocket the GOAT conversation? Does he want to be better than MJ? He said he's the GOAT. And then after I stopped, I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, it was the greatest team to ever assemble. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. Uh, like I said, man, bro, you my dog. You know this, though. Me and bro have been in arguments about this, though. Well, does he not, take that? Does he like? Is he conscientious about that shit? Bro laughs at that shit, bro. Because like, I feel like he's he has these, in the conversation. Why the fuck does? I mean, he I care? feel like he is the conversation. He's getting compared to Michael Jordan, dog. We have real life arguments in barbershops about who's better between him and Mike. So let me ask you this: though. Fuck who he go get mad for? He don't get mad, bro. That's what I'm saying about Bron. That's raw as fuck to me. Because me personally. I would be like, Mike got to play me one-on-one. -on -one. Most people want to be the GOAT, and you can't get there, right. right? We fall short. We run out of talent. I ran out of talent. Injuries or whatever. LeBron is actually there. Do you think that takes away, do you think having this conversation sometimes takes away from what LeBron has accomplished? Yes, though? because he's not done, and we're talking about everything he's doing now, right? We talk about the GOAT, the greatest of all time. That's when a player is done, and now you can put their resume versus the next resume. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've been, we've been talking about LeBron as a GOAT since... 2010. We're 2021. This man still got another five years to play if he, if, you know, God willing, he don't get hurt. So, like what I said, he will be a GOAT. Someone's going to say, LeBron's my GOAT, hands down, nothing else. Just like I say, Jordan's my GOAT. It's generational GOATs. That's what people got to understand. It's yeah, a lot of eras. great players that play sports, but it's eras of GOATs. And everyone want to make one GOAT. It's, it's impossible to make one GOAT because as great as LeBron is, it will be another. This is just the way the game is. This is the way the world works. It will be another person that come in and become someone's GOAT. Talk to us about two. I mean, there's a, I don't know if it's true, but I heard that Bron saved your life. Man, it's look, swimming shit, any truth to it? I just want to know if it's true. It's, it's, it's true, man. We was, what happened? We was in like the little grotto, like in the Bahamas. You know, you can swim underneath. Because Jack is great to get in the bathtub, so you can't swim neither? I can swim, but I'm going to tell you some real <laughs> shit. I can, I can survive. <laughs> okay, okay, that's I important. Can survive. That's what you need. So we in there, and we trying to get back, everybody swimming back to the, to the boat, but I, I'm snorkeling too. We snorkeling on the way back. And my head is in the water, and I'm snorkeling, and I look up, and every time I look up out the water, the boat is further and further oh, away. No, no. <laughs> and I'm getting pushed by the current. By the undertow and current. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> yo. Like, niggas is looking at me like, like I'm joking. I'm like, yo, I need help. Like this, I'm, I'm swimming, I'm like this. I'm trying to hold on to a rock. He was exhausted. I was exhausted. I'm like, I ain't gonna fight that current like that. So the one guy was like, just don't fight it. You know what I'm saying? Let it, just go with it. Go with the flow. And I see Brian jump in the water. He's just, you know, Aquaman. Aquaman, Aquaman jump in the water. <laughs> I was, because D-Wade was right in front of me. Uh -huh. D got on right before me. So I'm thinking D going to come back, but I know D ain't rocking with the water like that. You know what I'm saying? So D over there like, he like, yo, Yo, go get him, man. Right? <laughs> go get him. And I just see Brian, Brian just come like, I got you, I got you, champ. I got you, I got you. Grab me. And we went back, we went back to the boat, man. Yeah. So, all purpose. The run is all purpose. So, so Yo, lifeguard, all kind of shit. But it's crazy because he can really, he's very good at a lot of shit. 
Mm -hmm. Like, I don't give a fuck what it is. He's gonna be successful at that. Mm -hmm. He's gonna figure it out. One of them people. He just wanted them, he just wanted them natural freaks, man. You just, I call him a lab baby, man. Right. He, was, he was building the lab. <laughs> <laughs> Watching LeBron, and we've all been pampered, if not spoiled, to the fact that he's been consistent every year to come out with this certain level. But we forget that LeBron is great while he's playing the game. But let's just talk about his progression. Obviously, Tay, you, you've played him. You've seen um, moments where he was over the top great. Talk about just his greatness and how, you know, how we are spoiled as fans and uh, his greatness and what he's putting on the game. You know what, uh, you know, from the time that he first came in the league, you know, Saw it. his debut in Sacramento where he was attacking the rim with, you know, ferocity and right. finishing. And right. As you can see here, when he had that uh, phenomenal second half against us, it's All like right. he just hit a turbo button. Man. You know, we in quicksand. Yeah. All right. You know, we went to fifth straight conference finals at that moment. <laughs> you know, we didn't play 500 games in five seasons. Right. We in quicksand, my man putting the turbo button on, and he's still doing it. It's like he hitting the R1 on you. He's still hitting the turbo button to this day. Well, There's no reason for us to be here if we want confidence. May 31st, 2007 was the Eastern Conference Finals. The series was tied two to two. Being in the Palace of Auburn Hills in the playoffs, that's one of the most hostile environments to be in. You just feel like it's just you 12 against the whole city of Detroit. Go the night at the Palace of Auburn Hills when LeBron went nuts in the fourth quarter in overtime. And I always have to look back and say, now what was it? It was like 25 straight points and 29 out of 30 or something like that. But it was one of those times where we're doing the show from the arena because it was the conference finals. And we're on the set and Kenny and Chuck are there. And it was the only time I've seen him speechless. I wanted to put the responsibility on myself and have me answer the call. Here's James. Yes. And it counts. The Cavaliers down by one. And Seal defending on James. The defense was flat. Basically just, just gave him one of my left to right crossovers. Once I seen I had him off balance, I wanted to try to be aggressive as I could to, uh, to make Tay not even thinking about, you know, coming over and trying to block the shot. The problem is so bad. He has been spectacular. As the fourth quarter started running down, it got to a point where I said, we've come this far. There's no looking back now. As a leader, I can't allow my team to fail. Out of 10, James with the step. This has been some kind of performance by this young guy. You start to notice that you're in the zone. All you're thinking about is your next make. Here's James. <laughs> he scored 15 of the last 16 points. You know, everything is working, so now you have the defense off balance. They don't know if you're going to pull up and shoot a jump shot. They don't know if you're going to shoot a fadeaway. Got clock to five. James has to fire and oh, scores. Oh, my. LeBron James, he has scored the last 20 of the Cavs' last 21 points. I think we've gone from having a winner in this game to having a survivor. It's one thing to leave a fan speechless, but when you leave a player speechless, because they've been there, they know, they know what, it, what it takes to play in a playoff game, you know, what it, takes to, what it takes to win. And when they see a player doing it to that level, that that LeBron did that night, and they're just like, <laughs> I mean, I was getting that look. <laughs> but as we were watching it, it was just like, shake your head, jaw dropping, wow. It was like, who's gonna dig down to win this basketball game? On top of LeBron, behind the back dribble, four, filled it up, I don't believe it. He scored the last 24 of the last 25. Jumps up a three, gets through. 46 points. For LeBron James, he has scored the last 27 of the last 28. 24 seconds to go in double OT. Baseline left sheet, turn around, got blocked, no foul. Cavaliers at possession with 11.4 to go. Set it here. Bring LeBron to the top. Take the picture you drive at the last set. That's what I stay after practice for, and this what I'll be in the weight room for. To if it's that one game where you need to use every little bit of energy to help your team win. James, working it down, five seconds, four, three, James scores! And the Cavaliers come away with an impressive...
probable victory here at the Palace. He had a magical game against the Pistons. When you, because you played against Jordan when he was, do you see the same velocity? You see similarities there? The difference is, um, you know, they're, they're both equally great. LeBron James always came to the game with the same thing that you came to the game with, where he was concerned about others, right? Mm. Not only did he have to, have to score, Doubt. but he also had to make this one better, had to make, the, and he had the responsibility. Mm. Jordan, you know, took, Kobe, took it, took it the, the those yeah. guys, they come to the game and it's like, okay, Me. how many points you need Me. to win? Me. 40, right? right? Oh, 41 good enough? Mm. All right, tomorrow I'm gonna get 50. Mm. Oh, 50 ain't good enough? He okay, I can get 60. He had 48, he had 48. 48 points for LeBron James. He scored 29 of the last 30. One of the great performances of all time. Yeah. And yeah. we've been spoiled. Yeah. He's, it's just been it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do, uh, you know. And not only that, he came into the league with a lot on his shoulders. Right. What's LeBron like? LeBron, he's he's a cool guy. <laughs> he um, he he's a guy that actually for me when I was uh, coming through college when I first met him, he came to come a couple of my games. He's just real down to earth, um, approachable. Um, gave me a lot of mental you know, nuggets that I could take with me as, a, as I started my own NBA career. And um, you know, obviously as a basketball player, the dude's amazing. So uh, somebody that has a lot of pressure on him and uh, somehow seems to keep getting better. I know how we felt playing against Jordan. Like Jordan was the most dominant player in our era. And I would, we would, we would talk for hours on the phone watching him play against another team, mm -hmm. you know, just admiring him play. But at the same time, it was like there were things that he did in the air that we just couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I look at LeBron James in this era, and I say he's doing things that, you know, y'all just can't do. How, how do y'all feel about LeBron? And then we can talk about how we talked <laughs> about Jordan. I'd say uh, in terms of you know, one guy being able to change the course of a game the way he can. Uh, he controls the pace. He does things that you kind of look like, you know, how did how did he how did he do that? Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter sometimes how great a defense you play on him. And it's sheer strength and power to get to the basket. Um, he's obviously developed that outside game that that keeps you honest. Um, it's something that uh, you need all antennas up, all five guys every night, and you know. Uh, if you don't bring it, he's, he's liable to try to expose you. So, uh, right. in terms of you know that first championship run, um, matching up with him, and some of the stuff that he did on a nightly basis, it was it was it was spectacular. But it, you know, at the end of the day, like that gives you even more kind of competitiveness and fire to you know try to figure out how to overcome it and, and, and still win. And it gives you a little bit more gratifying feeling when you do too. So. You know, do you do you feel like a, a strength difference? Because we talk about it a lot on television when we say, oh, he's so much bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what it's like to feel it. Can mm -hmm. you, like, describe? Oh, you can feel it, especially on the block and transition. You're just in awe of, like, I've never seen such a big human move so lightly on his feet. Mm -hmm. Like, his steps are small, but they're so quick. You know, mm -hmm. it's incredible. I remember one time in the finals, I got the ball on a break, and. Andre was behind me, Iguodala, and LeBron was chasing me. He said, you better dunk it, you better dunk it. So I went up to flush it and I almost killed myself because I was nervous LeBron was gonna come by and, and just said, oh, dunk, you better dunk it, dunk it, because he was coming full speed. Yeah, yeah, chase yeah. So I almost, the landing wasn't pretty. So I made sure I flushed that thing because I wasn't trying to see that ball go to half court. Right. So that's just kind of the presence he has in the court. You know, you know where he's at at all the time. He's great at playing free safety, kind of like Jordan was. and. You're just in awe of the things you can do in the air. I mean, like you said, me and Steph could never do these things, no matter how much we work, work on our vert, right. how many squats we do, we'll never be able yeah. to jump 40 inches and yeah. alter our body like that. We gotta get it fundamentally, we right. gotta get it for, with skill, but those dudes blend it with skill and just sheer power. There's no nights off and that's draining. Yeah, I know who he is. Um, you know, <laughs> that's not, he's part of the front office group. He was really excited about about me missing, uh, you know, that shot a little bit more extra 
than I would have liked, but you know, he got a roof for his for his team, obviously. And he was uh, you know, he showcased that. So, you know, I knew I had another quarter and uh the fourth quarter is my favorite. Read it perfectly. LeBron three on two, LeBron all the way, LeBron scores eight points, LeBron again the deal all the way, LBJ throw it down, timeout, Cleveland. Here comes Braun all the way to score. Here we've only got three to shoot. Logo. Logo three for LeBron. It's LeBron. Just hit that big three. Down the middle he goes. Three. LeBron stepping back for a three. Off the court two in this area. Three. Oh, now. Trying to get it in the fridge. LeBron, tough shot. No, Nothing no. Nothing too tough for the King tonight. Nothing too tough. <laughs> he was definitely the reason why uh, LeBron went for 21 in the fourth quarter and uh, outscored the whole Cavs team. So, you know, he looked for anything similar to what Kobe did. Looked for anything for motivation, and he definitely <laughs> found it. it. The real part about it, look at the head snap. It was a quick Instant. head snap. Like, right? Oh, no, you did just like he knew the and then he looked back like at him again. Who laughed. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I, I heard was, that I got laugh you. Before. I got you. You want to wake up? You want to make wake me up? I right. got something for you right here. And he went off. And that is the end of this first episode of this three-part series. If you would like to see part two, be sure to hit that like button. If you hit that like button, I will upload the video immediately. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and to stay notified, hit that notification bell. And I will catch you guys in part two. I'm out. Peace.